The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. There has never been a better time to strive for being a saint. The saints flourish in difficult times and in persecution. And indeed, we're living in very difficult times. And so, as St. Paul would say, where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. Romans 5, 20. There is so much grace being poured out of heaven. And perhaps I might even a little on the humoristic side say that because things are getting so rife with conflict, and the atheism and secularism and hedonism we're getting so rife with that that it almost seems like God has to lower the bar a little bit so that he can get more people in because he's interested in making saints the book of revelations describes of a time of great distress. This has never been absent from the church. And especially back in early Christianity, right after Pentecost, the first thing that happens, huge persecution. It doesn't stop the army of saints from marching. Later on, you would have the persecutions of Nero. He didn't stop the army of saints from marching. A little later in history, you would have the persecution of a guy named Dalmitian. Bloody times. The saints did not stop marching. And then the Diocletian persecutions among the greatest and most bloody, the era of martyrs, it's called. That didn't stop the church either. Those are only a couple snippets from history. No, the Church of Saints marches on. All Saints celebrates 
the unknown who are in heaven. Anybody who goes to heaven is a saint. Some are already known by, some, by revelation. But there's a vast army that is unknown to us, which we will all come to know soon, I hope. And so that is the church triumphant. They cheer for us. They pray for us. Yes, they pray for us. Really? The saints are praying for you in heaven? I have some proof for you. Who has asked St. Anthony for a favor recently and had it answered? You see? Who has asked for the intercession of Padre Pio and had it taken care of? They're interested in us, and they're the church triumphant. We are in the church militant. We are the saints in training. We are the saints who are being formed, not there yet. Halos are waiting to be handed out, but not for us yet. Who wants a halo? If you're thinking, I'm too humble to say I want one, that's a lie. No, because we're, we're all supposed to have one. God wants all of us to have a halo. He wants us all to be his saints in heaven. We're all being called to graduate from being mere children of God to the communion of saints. To serve in the beatific vision. This formation takes place with a faith that is nurtured. In the Psalms, in the Psalms this week we heard, you, O Lord, are my strength. When the Lord is your strength, or when you're asking for the Lord to be your strength, that prayer is answered by giving you more faith, not being physically strong but we're talking spiritually strong. And God is pouring out graces for that purpose in our hearts. Many graces being poured out. And see what love the Father has, St. John tells us, in letting us be called his children. That is what we are. But we are to come to a place where there will be something more revealed. That is the way we reflect his likeness in the communion of saints. The book of Revelations talks about people being signed with a cross on their forehead. It's the sacrament of confirmation equipping you and empowering you with the Holy Spirit to be on the road as a saint. The book of Revelations describes a field of people all around the altar dressed in white. It is the baptized who have made it all around the throne of the Lamb. And it's in union with the, the, the assembly of the saints on earth, the saints in training. That's you as we're around the blood of the, as they were around the altar of the Lamb. We're all being called to be saints. Don't have false humility and bad modesty by saying, it's not me. That's God's providential plan for all of us. In the gospel, Jesus says, no one who comes to me will I ever reject. That's a promise from the words of Scripture from Christ himself. Let me say it again. No one who comes to me will I ever reject. This morning I celebrated a funeral mass with somebody. When I said that, I saw a couple of people smile and I said, but there's a catch. There is. The catch is this. No one comes to me. You have to go. We have to march. We have to march toward Christ. We might not be able to do anything about wars and powers and principalities that seem to be afflicting us, but we can march to Jesus Christ and let him do it. One of the things that also we must do is we must be very, very faithful to the Holy Mass, especially on Sunday. 
because it's where the communion of saints gather, the church militant with the church triumphant. We form a unity and a body. And we must be adamant about receiving the sacrament of reconciliation to make sure our souls are shiny and they reflect the halo we're about to get at any moment in our life. As I was meditating on the Beatitudes, I don't want to go through all of them, but I was thinking, this is our declaration of independence as Christians. It's a declaration of independence to be totally free from any bondage of the world so that we can be so freely in Jesus Christ who wants to set us free and make us so free that there's no time limit for us in eternity. Oh no, it is not a bad time. These are not bad times. These are times for making saints. And God desires to have his saints coming home. And so we remain faithful to Jesus Christ and continue to march toward our celestial kingdom to meet our brothers and sisters in the church triumphant. Regina Jenny, letare, alleluia, qui aque menuis ti portare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, ora pro nobis Deus.